Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm well, I've had an opportunity to work with um, Secretary Disbro. I haven't had a chance to really meet the two of you, so I spent a lot of time researching, and quite frankly, I don't think I've ever said this before, I think we have three people here that are going to do great jobs, and I, and I appreciate your background, what you bring to the table and your opening statements. Um, the, before this committee, uh, Gates testified, and this is a quote now, without proper and predictable funding, no amount of reform or clever reorganization will provide America with a military capable of accomplishing the missions assigned it. Now, I asked that question because I, I agreed with that statement. And I look at the threat that the, we're facing in this country now, and, and, uh, and I see, I, I think we're in the most threatened position we've ever been in. We have countries, you know, like you know, North Korea, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Yemen, uh, they're run by questionable people who are gaining the capability of a weapon and a delivery system, and it's really dangerous. You know, and so I, I, I look at that, and I would, would ask you, do you all agree with uh, Secretary Gates' statement that I just quoted? <clears throat> I would agree, Senator Hoff, and that I would agree, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, I would definitely agree with Secretary Gates. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Senator, this is an area where uh, there is not enough resource right now, and it's that fine art of balance between today's readiness needs and modernizing our force that's important. Well, yeah, you know, right now, the uh, I think it was, I can't remember who it was who testified, but he was reminding us that back in 1961, 51% uh, of our budget was uh, spent on defending America. And it's down to 15 right now. And so uh, th this is the mismatch that I see out there at a time that we have the, such great uh, threats. And I, uh, so I just, you're inheriting this mess, so you're not at fault in this thing, but do you think that this is just in inadequate defense uh, funding? Uh, Senator, it is something that absolutely concerns me. Um, we can't shortchange national defense, especially now in a time of such uncertainty. I think that uh, what's important to do, and if, conf if confirmed, I will work very hard with the Navy and Marine Corps leadership to do, sure. is to try to determine exactly what we mean when we say we're accepting more risk. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's really important, and I look forward to working with the committee to, <coughs> to make sure that you have all the information that you need to understand whether or not we're going too far on those cuts. Yeah, I think you'd probably pretty much agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Secretary Disro, the, in one of the statements, the questions asked of you, it says, what is your assessment of the current readiness of our Air Force to meet national security requirements across the full spectrum of military uh, operations? Your response was, our combat coded units uh, readiness is assigned against a full spectrum of military operations. Less than one half of those units are rated as ready. I know you're concerned about it. how concerned are you, and what, what do you see as a remedy for that? This is a critical priority, Senator Inhofe. This, our combat-coded uh, readiness varies across uh, major weapon systems, but are critical in fighters. And on average, about 50 percent of our inventory on any day is not uh, not ready. Yeah, that's, that's and that's very disturbing. And, and, and right now, I'm not sure what can be done about that. And I think that. Uh, I say to uh, uh, Mr. Murphy, the, the question that was asked you, and what is your assessment of the current readiness of the Army to meet the national security? Uh, and you talk about, however, given the decreasing resources and the shrinking capacity of the Army, the Army is mortgaging future readiness and response capabilities. Now, I've always felt that's true, and I think it's, that, that's obvious, that when you are strapped the way we are strapped right now with the expectations of a policy that we're supposed to be following with the resources that we have, you have to give up something. And you give up modernization, you give up readiness, uh, you give up maintenance. And uh, so which of those things is the most, concerns you the most right now? Because you're going to have to give up some of those. Well, Senator, I, I, it's all about readiness for warfighters. And I think when you give up modernization, when I said in my opening statement, when we need to give our warfighters the tactical and technical advantage, because we do not want a fair fight with our enemies, that that's what you're mortgaging when you don't invest in weapon systems, et cetera, or as much as you would like to. But I would say to you, sir, um, the numbers itself, when I left the Congress five years ago, we were 45 brigade combat teams on active duty. We're now down to 31 brigade combat teams. Uh, 
so that's when I shared with you earlier my concern. We got to make sure that it's about readiness. And and also, I look at this. We're giving up superiority, and we've always been superior. Do you? Uh, and I'm out of time here, but I will read the statement of Secretary Hagel. He said, quote, American dominance on the seas, in the skies, and in space can no longer be taken for granted. I think that's true. Do you think it's true? Uh, Senator, I think that we, it risks being true. Um, if we don't take, uh, take care right now on readiness and balancing readiness with current readiness with modernization, if confirmed, um, readiness will be one of my absolute yeah. top priorities. Thank you. Senator, I'm very concerned about our adversaries and their growing capabilities across the board, the speed at which they are modernizing their own forces. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a critical con concern. The Air Force is the smallest it's been since its inception. And with demand uh, in only increasing, those two things do not match. Yeah, and we've got right. a threat that we need to keep, up, keep pace with and, and go beyond. Thank you. And I think that's also true with the Army. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.